Okay, hello Katie. Thank hello. You. <laughs> hello. How are you this morning? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And thank you so much for agreeing to do this, this interview chat show process that I'm going to be mm -hmm. doing with a group of people over, over a period of time, talking about their experiences of um, lockdown and also the, the regulations around COVID and how that's impacted on their personal lives, on their family life, on their work life, and also what benefits it's brought to their lives, because it has done for some people. Yeah. And um, one of the reasons that I'm doing this, Katie, is simply because of my experience, which actually recently brought me to my knees mentally and emotionally. And it, it actually took me to a point where I struggled to actually reach out for help because of, you know, just feeling like I'd be judged, you know, feeling like a failure and feeling just completely alone and I realized but it also brought me space to address some unresolved issues so but there's you know and it kind of made me think that there's hundreds of people out there who are in utter confusion and bound up with feelings of pressure to do something not knowing what to do mm -hmm you know, worried about going back to work and also just terrified about what lies ahead. What, what's, what's for the future? Yeah. And, but there's also those groups of people who have experienced the most amazing benefits from this extraordinary situation. And it's actually opened up opportunities for self-development that they wouldn't ordinarily have been able to explore if it hadn't been for this pandemic. So I've known you, Katie, for, a few, for, for quite a few years now, and we actually met um, when we were working together at ARI, Aberdeen Royal Infirmary, as care managers in the social work department. And a lot's going on in life since then. And I just wondered mm. if you <laughs> wouldn't mind, I'd just like to invite you, given your experience of what it's brought for you, firstly, in your work capacity, what's it brought out for you, Katie? Well, so I work in the community mental health team now um, in South Aberdeenshire, and I would say work-wise, we are just as busy, if not busier, um, because we've had to change the way we've worked because we can't go into people's homes, which is what we normally do. So we've been having video calls, um, just telephone contact with people. We have started doing doorstep visits, but it's all like it's all a learning curve for us, to be honest. Um, and we are starting to, as restrictions are being lifted, starting to go into people's homes again. And there's been situations where we couldn't avoid going into people's homes, um, but then having to wear PPE, it just puts a barrier between you and the patients that we're seeing. So. It has been a challenge, definitely. Um, and also working from home, um, I'm having to find a space in my house where I am able to then walk away from because I don't want to be at work 24 seven. So initially um, I was working from my bedroom, um, which was not great because then how can you switch off? So I have now moved into this wee room, which is like, well, it's where I, I leave my ironing basically that needs done. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have removed it for today so you're not seeing it in the background. That doesn't mean that I've done my ironing by the way. <laughs> Just moved it elsewhere. Yeah. Um, but it, it's, been, it's been strange and I've never been somebody that um, has chosen to work from home so the organisation that I work for promote it. They're very flexible where you work um, but I've always chosen to go into the office. Um, just so I have that detachment from my work life and home life. Yeah. Um, so that's been a struggle for me. 
and actually now I'm worrying about the transition back into the office when whenever that will happen. I don't think it'll happen anytime soon. But now I've got into my groove working at home, um, it'll be it'll be strange having to go back to the office again. So things have changed a lot um, in some ways, and then not at all in others because we're still having all the same meetings. They're just happening online. Um, so I think people that haven't been like I'm not the most technical person in the world. So learning all these new systems. Yeah. Um, so we started off on Zoom. We're now not allowed to use Zoom. <laughs> we're now on yeah. Microsoft Teams. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so using Skype and just trying different things. Um, I ran a workshop recently um, and I've never, I've never run a uh, virtual workshop before. So I had no idea what it was going to be. So it was quite anxiety provoking for me as well. Um, yeah. But it worked okay. So yeah, it's, yeah it's, that's there's been lots of changes, but oh. lots of things stayed the same as well. So I think I'm quite lucky that I've had my work, to be honest, because it's given me that focus and I need to just get on with things. And I think um, for people who have had that taken away from them, it must be quite challenging. Yeah, definitely. But that's, and that's interesting, Katie, what you're saying about that you know, trying to find that space because everything's kind of being enmeshed, the work and the home life, and especially in the area that you work in with community mental health. I mean, because you've got that, so you've got that all in one area and it, and how tricky is it to actually separate that? In, yeah, you know, well, in, it's in, quite hard, even yeah. just like, because I'm at home, I'm like, well, well, I'll just, um, I'll just check my emails and, you know, like actually switching off from it. So, yeah. I'm really trying to stick to the hours that I'm employed to work um, rather than just, so I don't work on a Monday. So um, trying to keep to that, keep in my Monday for non-work related activities. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's more difficult, I would say now. Yeah, aha, uh -huh. and that's, so you've managed, but you're, you're managing to find, you're managing to find some kind of a balance but, and I'm wondering, that's, that's, yeah, I just, it hadn't really occurred to me, you know, that kind of flat, trying to find that split between, you know, the, that physical boundary where you're in an office, you can just, you can just get, you know, you can go away, you can go to your home, which is a switch is a safe place. But when it's all together, it, yeah, tr mm -hmm. really trying to make sure your boundaries are, you know, just, you know, making sure you're, you've got your own space. So that's tricky. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Um, I think probably one of the, the best things that I've come out of it is, um, despite the fact that my whole team are working from home, we all feel more part of a team now than we ever have. So we're having a daily catch up um, on Microsoft Teams every morning just to check in with each other. Um, and we never did that before. We never just caught up. I mean, like, we'd be like passing ships in the night sometimes. We would, yeah. you know, go days without seeing each other. Um, and now, although it's, um, you know, virtually seeing each other, but it means that we're actually checking in, making sure we're all okay. Um, so that has definitely been a, a huge positive for us to come out of all of this. Yeah, that's really, that 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 enforced kind of separation has actually made people look after each other more yeah that's really I mean, just because we work in mental health does not mean we're immune from having yeah. difficulties with our own mental health <laughs> yeah so you so it's really made you more aware and pull yourselves together that's really that's yeah that's, that's really great katie and for your you know for your for your home life so how's that how's that affected you know your family life for you because your family you've got so a big family now <laughs> i have got um, a very boisterous uh two and a half year old so it's been quite tricky friends he wants to go to the park so I, I haven't really known how to explain to him everything that's going on. So I've just kind of said that it's a weird holiday where everybody has to stay at their own house. And it's, it's a wee bit easier now that his friends can come and play in the garden, but trying to keep 
two and a half year olds away from each other is impossible. So um, I'll be completely honest, there's hugs and kisses going on between them, but I kind of feel like they need that contact. So I probably shouldn't be saying that, should I? But anyway, I've said it now. <laughs> but they do, they need, they need contact. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I would say like, um, he's managed really well with it. I'm, I'm probably quite lucky at the age that he's at where he has a little bit of understanding, but not enough to know that it's actually quite a scary time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, having him at home all the time while I'm trying to do work is tricky. Um, but trying to keep a bit of a routine for him has been really important. Um, um, and I'm quite lucky now because I am a key worker um, he can go back to the childminder, so he's getting a little bit of his normal routine back as well. So, um, yeah, it's it's well, we, we've been completely mad and added a puppy into the mix as well. <laughs> so, I will see. Don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> <gasps> well, it'll keep um, yes, it'll keep uh, your hobby busy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, that so. was the, the understanding of getting a puppy was I was taking no responsibility for it. He <laughs> is um solely responsible <laughs> for this puppy. So <laughs> and I'm sticking to that. <laughs> oh bless. And how has how has he had his work? You know, how has that been affected? Has he been affected by that at all? Um so he has been at work a, a, a bit because he works in oil and gas and um, he's classed as a key worker as well and um, so he has been offshore once during this time um, and he actually found it wasn't really any different so he had his temperature taken at the heliport and given a mask to wear in the helicopter and that was about it that was really the differences that he found which it was quite surprising I think it's different company by company um but yeah when when he was away it was just kind of fairly normal I think there was less people on the rig um and that that was it really yeah so, but yeah it, it, he's he's kind of used to being at home so he just kind yeah. of he's he's at home a lot of the time anyway so I think he's probably struggled having me here because um, it means he can't get away with sitting and playing the PlayStation all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that whole that, that that thing about being in confined, but you know, and that and that can up for a long mm. period of time now. Everybody, families are kind of pulled together. How's that? What's, what's whether you like it or not? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure it brings up lots and lots of wonderful things for families. Yeah. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> Um, I was actually going to ask you, Katie, what, what have you found, what benefit, have you found that it's, you know, it's benefited your work wise in terms of the team being pulled together? Has it brought any other yeah. benefits in your life? A strange time. Yeah, um, so I have found that I'm spending my evenings more productively. So instead of sitting watching the TV, I have been focusing more on things that I enjoy doing. So I've been doing a lot more art and that's really to keep me um, mentally well. So for me, it's it's so important to have a bit of space for a bit of mindfulness thinking um, and just relaxing. So I'm, I'm also a baker um, and that's what I really, I used to use baking as a way of de-stressing. Um, I've kind of moved away from that now I actually find it quite stressful <laughs> so I'm now um, doing a lot of art so drawing, lino cutting, I'm away to start some sewing which I have, oh, wow. I'm, I'm rubbish at sewing so absolutely rubbish at it but I'm, I'm going to make a floral wreath out of felt so it's just I think this is a really it's a really good opportunity for people to try different things and um, mm -hmm. to see what they enjoy um, and also just to give themselves that bit of space for some mindfulness because it's it's so important um, mm. well, I, I certainly find it important for my mental health um, yeah. and mindfulness isn't about clearing your thoughts it's about accepting that your thoughts are there 
and yeah. noting them and then moving on from them rather than letting them take over. Um, so instead of it becoming a rumination or um, or anything like that, it's, it's really just accepting that they're there and moving on from them. So yeah, yeah I've been doing lots of creative things. Lovely. Um, I've even managed to keep some plants alive, so wow. which is not like me at all. <laughs> So I feel like I am, like I, I, I'm growing as a person during this time as well. Yeah. I think, I think that's something that's happening for a lot of people. And I know that I've been, you know, it's, I've had swings and backs and forwards and, and, and difficult times, but yeah, mindfulness, Katie, absolutely. I think it's been one of my saving mm. graces is, is doing these practices, but it has yeah. actually given I don't know about other people, but it has actually given me the space to have a look at things and have a look at what what's what's good for me. You know, what 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 am yeah. I? What really? What do I really want to do? What am I good at? What exploring different parts of yourself. You know, so yeah, it, and it's I've, so. I'm just wondering, Katie, have you got any of your lino prints or anything there? That you want to show oh, oh I know you just say to have some I don't have any of my liner prints but I took some of my drawings just because That's this lovely. is something that literally anybody could do so okay. this is what I run my um, virtual workshop on so it was on mindfulness drawing um, and it was part of mental health awareness week that I did this um, and the theme of mental health awareness week this year was kindness Aww. so a lot of them so it's just drawings and it's just pen and paper Aww. and it's not even like a scrap bit of paper so I just draw these kind of things um, and honestly like from a distance it looks quite impressive but if you look close up it's like actual just scribbles really it's um, lovely this one here are these lino got, prints so this is, what's that are these lino prints no no these are just um it's just pen and paper so it's oh, just drawing that's, that's um, like this is one of my favorite things to do so I just like put the pen round and round and round yeah. um but it, I find it so relaxing and literally anybody could do this so um it was it was quite nice like I had quite a range of people that joined in on my workshop including um one of our psychiatrists and oh. he found it so um beneficial like and that that's the thing just like I said before because we work in mental health doesn't mean that we're immune from having these difficult thoughts or mm. feeling a bit low or anxious or or any of it so it's important to give ourselves that space and time to to do something that relaxes us and it, it's different for different people but if I just think if you don't know what what it is then try all these different things and find what works for you yeah absolutely Katie that's fabulous and because you're, you know, you're, you're in a community mental health, you're a senior practitioner. If there's anybody out there who is struggling, I mean, that's a lovely thing to do. That the mindful drawn is is just it looks just just fabulous. But I'm just wondering if there's anybody out there who is really struggling. Where would you? What would you suggest to them? So um, there's the Gramping Resilience Hub has been set up so this is um you can self-refer to it so if you just put grampian resilience hub into your um google um search engine that's the word i was looking for um it, it should come up um i mean i can send you the link um awesome. so you have that and it, it you can self-refer to it you can refer on behalf of somebody else and it, it's depending on what you're feeling and um, they've got different levels of practitioners so there's some people in my team that provide the support there's um psychologists uh, it just depends kind of what's going on for you so they do ask for a little bit of information and um, but it's been set up specifically for people that are struggling with COVID-19 so you don't have to have had any contact with any sort of services previously um, you don't have to have a diagnosed mental disorder um, it, it's just for people that are struggling with the changes that COVID-19 has brought so um, I would really recommend that if anybody is struggling then they, they reach out and, and get that support because that's what it's there for so um, that, that's where I would 
suggest, but they are recommending different apps. There's an app called Headspace, which um, I use myself. So if I'm struggling to sleep, Headspace is absolutely fantastic. Um, but again, that's the one that works for me. There's lots of different ones. There's one called Cam. There's one called Happify. So I've tried all of these ones and Headspace was the one that worked for me. So um, they've got sleep casts, which are amazing. So it's just people telling us, telling you a story basically until you fall asleep. It's lovely. Um, but you have to find what works for you. Yeah. So, um, most of these do free trials as well, which is great. So I tend to do the free trial and then move on to the next one. <laughs> yeah. Because they can be quite expensive. I know. That um, sounds, yeah, that sounds great. I like that one where the, there's somebody telling you a story. Which one's that, Katie? Yeah, so that's Headspace. Headspace. So there's absolutely fantastic stories on there. Like, they're great. Um, I think Cam has bedtime stories as well. well not necessarily bedtime stories, but... Yeah, um, I know what you yeah cam has has that as well um happify isn't isn't so much about um helping you get to sleep or relaxing it's more about your how you think about yourself um and self-esteem and things like that which is so important as well yeah. especially i i imagine for people who are struggling being um not able to do their job at the moment it must be quite difficult um so there's great resources out there that's great. Thank you so much, Katie. That was That's really right. fabulous. That was really great. I thank you so much for sharing for sharing that and sharing your experience. And um, and I hope you enjoyed the the interview. Um, and for, I did. for it was great to speak to you. Yes, it was really lovely to speak to you too and mm -hmm. hear about what's what's happening. Thank you so much for these resources. That's that's really helpful. And I kind of hope that anybody else who's watching this gets something out of it, you know, especially with, with these ideas that you've given people. They're great. So I'm just going to, I'm going to wish you, thank you again, Katie, for being part of this. No it's problem. Helpful. And I, I hope you have a lovely day. But I, I'm also going to be doing another interview on Wednesday with a funeral celebrant who has some really interesting things to tell us about, about that situation as well. So mm. I'm just going to say thank you again, Katie. Is there anything else that you'd like to say before we go? I don't think so. I just, I just want everybody to know that there is help out there um for all of us um and to not not feel that they can't reach out um because there's no point in in suffering in silence basically the help is there so so take it okay thank you so much katie okay okay bye thank you bye